We've been down here in Venice, Louisiana for a few days now. Got to fish with my old friend, Mike Fernet, and go out and target absolute giant monster redfish. And decided, you know, over dinner that we were gonna get to go and, and fish with Michael, his son, and do a totally different thing and get back into the, the back freshwater marshes and look for sight fishing opportunities. I'm Michael Fernet, and I'm a captain and a member of the uh, family business, family owned operation, the Redfish Lodge of Louisiana. Michael, I've known since he was probably 13, 14 years old, out competing against some of the most well-known red fishermen in the world. I met Chris along, along the Redfish Cup. You know, the first time I really remember Chris, while my dad and I were anchored up on the jetties in uh, either Galveston or Sabine, and, and Chris was anchored up just downstream of us, downriver a little bit. And we were anchored first and he kind of came around and, and the amount of respect that, that Chris gave to not only me, but it was my dad and kind of making sure that he wasn't too close when he set his anchor was, was top notch. Michael being Mike Frenette's son was born and raised on these waters in Southern Louisiana and has spent literally his entire life here. So at the age of 25 years old, he has more experience in this fishery and, and pursuing redfish than probably most people twice his age. What are you thinking this morning? Well, we're just gonna go have fun, you know? I'm, I'm gonna go back to a couple places that literally my dad brought me when I was two, three years old and we were small, my brother and I, we. We'd literally swim through these ponds, Chris, and, and you'd be able to see bass on one side, catch speckled trout on the other side, and redfish in the middle. And, That's and cool. I, I know those stories are far and few between, but they still do exist. Michael thought that, you know, we could go over on the other side of the marsh where the Mississippi River flows through a bunch of the marsh and is actually filtered by all that marsh grass and weeds and, and should clean up. So the game plan is, was to basically get and just kind of run until we found clean water. And once we found clean water, to then stop and pick it apart and, and until we started seeing fish and develop a pattern off of that. It was something that really excited me because when I was here, you know, pre-fishing with Chris years ago and everything, it, it just amazed me of the clear water and how, how the strikes were on it. When we first got into our spot, the tide was extremely high. We have a full moon and over a foot and a half of uh, tidal range here in Venice today, which is extremely, extremely high. So when we get that much tidal flow and that much current coming through our marsh, number one, there's gonna be a lot of vegetation and a lot of filtration of the water coming through there, making our water clean. And number two is the fact that if we could find that, that clean water, then it really might open up and, and be pretty fun. Wild Instinct Outdoors is in partnership with Ray Marine. Go hunting underwater with Ray Marine. What Michael had told me is with as high as the river is and unusually high for this time of year, it's gonna limit the places that there's clean water, that there are sight fishing opportunities. It doesn't mean that, you know, there's not redfish all over the place but it means for us trying to specifically sight fish we have to find areas where that's conducive we have to find clean water this is sick looking man there's definitely some fish right along here not oh right here right here eat it awesome there you go. <laughs> here's nothing keep your ride down that only happens here, buddy. Got in the grass. That was a cool eat, wasn't it? Oh, it's like, one. where did this thing come from, man? I looked in that spot ten five times. He came and then, out the grass. And then I looked back and he's floating there. Well, you catch that fish. I'm gonna hop down and grab him for you. Yeah. Let me know if you see another one and holler at kid up there. Spinner hit the water. That's so cool, man. Watching them eat. Nice Isn't that fish. Gorgeous? It's not a size or numbers game, it's about that hunt. That's right. And after a while, we started to put together a pattern of what these fish were doing and where they were. And as the water would fall out, 
Michael was saying that these fish that are all spread out through these ponds and up in these grasses, as that water would fall out, that stuff would get shallow and all those fish would slide out to the outside edges. He's tearing, he's ready to eat. There's another one over here, I'll get the one on the right. Yeah, that was sweet, dude. Okay, right in front of my fish. I see another one right here. Oh, that's a good one, brother. Beautiful. That's a good fish, too. Yes, it is. Well, here's that other one right here. Yep, there he is. That's cool, man. All the difference in the world standing six foot off the surface, huh? If you could just get a little bit up above them, Chris, especially with this glare that we got, you know, fighting us all day long, it makes all the bit of difference. Sure does. We got blue on this one's tail. It's a good fish. Come here, bud. Not as much oxygen back in this fresh water, huh? That's exactly right. We get hydrilla back here, and then we get a type of algae that about midway through the summer, it starts to really slime up. And as it does, it basically takes all the oxygen from the water to make the slime grow, and it takes all the oxygen from the fish. So when we catch them back here, we really got to take our time to put them back and make sure they're healthy before. Right. It takes a lot longer for them to revive. That's exactly right. That's a good fish, Mike. It's a beautiful fish, Chris. That's one we'd look for in the Redfish Cup, wouldn't Absolutely. It? Looked like he swam off pretty good, too. Oh, yeah. It was a new experience for me going to where we went and everything. I've never been around where you, you know, you look one direction, you can see ducks flying, and the uniqueness of the water and the cypress trees and things like that. This is cool, man, with all these cypress trees and the marsh. This is what you, what you picture when you talk about Louisiana, but these types of spots like this are actually few and far between. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, we're, we're losing more and more spots like this every single year, and, and it's not as easy to get it back as it is to lose it, so. Yeah. But I tell you what, we, a lot longer. We, we try our best to protect the little stuff we have left like this, because it's absolutely gorgeous. It and is. There's very few places in the world you could actually do stuff like this. I know, it. that's cool. This place is um, super unique. You know, the not only the attitude of the fish here, um, their veracity, you know, how aggressive they feed. There is no better place on the planet to sight fish for redfish. That being said, it's shrinking uh, by the day, you know, by the year. And, you know, you could really see that where, where we fished with Michael today. We got back into these freshwater ponds or, or the backs of these bays that where the water was fresh and we're fishing amongst cypress trees and hydrilla and no more than a half a mile away was cypress trees that were on the same line as the ones we were fishing that were dead from saltwater intrusion uh, solely because of the loss of marsh that was out that was you know stopping that influx or slowing that influx of saltwater and it's something that i think needs to be looked at, you know, um, needs to be brought to the attention nationally. People need to come here and visit this place and experience it for themselves because I think when they do, they'll gain an appreciation for it and there needs to be uh, some attention to, to what can be done, you know, what can be done to help sustain this fishery so that, you know, the generations after us can experience this because it's truly a remarkable place. Wild Instinct Outdoors is in partnership with Hooters, the cure for the common restaurant. The American Barrels, live free or die, a true American spirit. We started working down these edges, um, edges of where the clean water, crystal clear water, would meet dirty, muddy river water. and. Slowly, as that tide fell, we started seeing more and more and more fish. And it seemed like it just got better and better and better. I mean, it got to the point of complete total chaos. I mean, 
insanity. You'd miss a fish, you'd pull the hook on a fish and spin, uh, cast right back out and stick another one. I mean, you'd be looking at one fish over here and meanwhile, you know, Kit's over here hooking another fish. Another one. Good cast, Kit. You got him, buddy, you got there him, you go. buddy. Get him, get him, get him. Good nice, job, dude. Pal. Awesome shot. Good cast. Thanks, thanks. Awesome shot. It was it was difficult for the camera guys. They didn't know what to film. I mean, it was like total, complete chaos going on. Oh, yeah, I see him. Oh, I see him. Here you go. Watch this eat. You got him. <laughs> <laughs> this is... Uh, we got a little bit of chaos going on. a little on. weird. This is weird. I don't know any place you can literally do this, but... Three guys and four fish. Yeah. It's a heck of a problem to have, buddy. It's a good problem. <laughs> nice, Kit. Nice. Happened. Come right around. One at me. a time. That's good stuff. Is that cool? So cool. Oh, he's missing part Kit of his tail. Good that's I, too I had cool though. About four to choose from, so I threw it in front of the one that I wanted. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's the same problem we were talking that? about earlier with the tournaments. Is sometimes yeah. you got to just hold back and wait for the right one to swim by, yeah. or you gonna yeah. spend too much time catching the wrong fish. For me, coming from Southwest Florida, primarily being a sight fisherman, being a hunter, for me, there's there's no better way to pursue redfish to pursue any fish than to be sight fishing for it. As the tide started to drop throughout the afternoon, the only way I could explain it is, is kind of like, you know, a, a two-story putt-putt thing where, you know, the ball goes in at the top and it shoots down at the bottom. Well, if a guy sat at the top hole with a bucket of balls and just kept dropping those balls in, that's, that's, that's kind of how those redfish were shooting down these little troughs. So, you know, the, the water would go out on, on these shallow flats and all the water would drain in just to a little bit deeper spot coming down this, this deep edge. And, and literally every single redfish that had been on that, that flat had no choice but, you know, to be stacked in this little bit of deeper water. Ah, there he goes. Good shot, man. That's a good one. That's a real good one. <laughs> That was a so cool. Nice fish right there. That was awesome. Holy cow, dude. These are sick fish. These too. are all beasts, too. Look under my fish. They're trying to eat it out of my fish's mouth, literally. Here, I'll throw one right in there. Look right here. There's one that's following it. There's two following oh, it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's right under me. You'll catch him. Attaboy. Is that insane or what? That's sick. That's good stuff, dude. Good fish, too. Well, we got two studs, pal. Yeah, buddy. Let's go to the scales. Let's go. Mike, that was sick, dude. Just turned on. It's all about the tide, Chris. Once, you know, we had such a high tide this morning, once they finally came out that grass, there was nowhere for them to be but right on that edge. They all grouped up on that edge. They're stacked up, though. Yeah. That was sick, man. Some nice fish. They live right there, man. As long as everybody's right to them, they'll be there forever. Yeah. I hear that. Wild Instinct Outdoors is in partnership with XS Sight Systems, the fastest sights in any life. Boatmaster Trailers, the name that represents quality. The aggressiveness of the redfish here in Venice, Louisiana uh, makes this one of the very top destinations in the world to pursue redfish, whether it's on fly, whether it's sight fishing, uh, whether it's giant fish or hunting fish, it is, this is the best place in the world to do it. It got so crazy. We, we were catching so many fish that Michael and I decided to both of us grab fly rods and stand on the front of the boat and simultaneously try and f flip flies to fish that are coming from all directions. And it was just hilarious. You know, it's, it's not even, um, 
not even a situation that I would, that, that if you talk about fly fishing, this is not what you're going to picture, okay? We're hardly even making casts. I mean, we're flipping flies over top of each other. <laughs> this is just... Yeah. Okay, I'm not it oh, my bad. Michael had a couple fish track his fly. A big one came up and eat it ate his fly, spit it, Michael stripped it again, and it came back and ate it a second time. I mean, all, all of this happening within five or 10 feet of the boat. There you go. Bitch. Oh my gosh, that thing wanted to eat. That was pretty sick. Oh, look at these. Double it up, Al. Make a meat. You got that one on the reel, huh? Oh, yeah. He's rolling. Dude. I'll keep you up in there, you know? Pretty rad. You know it's crazy when we start busting out two fly rods at the same time? Yeah. And, <laughs> and I casted like this over top of you, you know? Pretty unbelievable. It really just doesn't get any better than this, Chris. It, no, I don't know how it could, pal. This is unbelievable. People dream and dream and dream about a day like today. Yeah. Just to have one chance, you know? Yep. It's a good fish, brother. Yeah, man. That's sick. Come here, you big son of a gun. That's a good fish, bro. Oh, yeah. Ah. It's hard to beat that. It really is. Dude, that was cool, brother. Isn't that sweet? How about that eat, too, man? He swiped at it, it's, missed it. It's proof that you don't have to be a great fly fisherman to catch him around here. Because <laughs> <laughs> I made a bad cast, pulled it away from him twice, and he was so territorial that he wanted that food back, and I literally just kind of flopped it in his face, and he ate it. You think it's because so he had that other smaller fish next to him, and yep. he was trying to... Just show it, show, show who was what boss. was up, yeah. Because as soon as that other little fish charged it, that thing came and passed him up and smoked Correct. it. Correct. Thank you, pal. That's just so cool, man. Dude, awesome. Just another day down here, and I'm lucky to be here. That's awesome. These are the days that we go into the outdoors for is for these special days. And when it happens, this is what makes you come back for more. And to get to experience a day like this with Kit and with Michael is, is really something that's special. And, and, and really it's what it's all about, you know, getting into the outdoors and experiencing it and experience the magic of it all with great friends. You know, to be able to, to work every single day with my family and, and you know, have great parents that, that raised my brother and I very well and, be able to work hard and pay it back forward to them. And on the flip side, you know, be able to share days like this with great friends like Kit and Chris and, and truly be able to, you know, enjoy what I love to do every single day is a complete blessing and, and a dream come true. After taking that 12 hour trip that ended up being about 30, which, you know, had some complications on the trip here, you, you just wonder whether that's, it's all gonna be worth it and everything. But I have to say, it wouldn't matter how long it took me to get here, it was a special time and I really enjoyed it and can't wait till I come back. After an incredible day of, of red fishing, to get to come back to the Fernets Lodge and hang out with everybody, enjoy some amazing Cajun cooking and just, you know, hang out around the camp and, and visit, that's just as big a part of it as anything. You know, the, the camaraderie, the friendships we build uh, because of the outdoors um, that last a lifetime. 
that's what that's all part of this and it's just as much a part of it as going out and catching fish or harvesting animals is is those friendships that are made and the camaraderie that that goes on around it